joy to me means when I am singing, I am enjoying. I am enjoying it. But to him, that is pain. Surely, love is a wonderful thing. It is more precious than emeralds, zamarud, uh, the stones, gemstones, and dearer than fine opals, silica, some form of silica, another type of gem. Pearls and pomegranates cannot buy it, nor is it set forth in the marketplace. It may be, not be purchased of the merchants, nor can it be weighed out in the balance for gold. That's now even uh, pearls and pomegranates cannot buy it. Probably pearls used to be very precious things there and pomegranates may not be growing in England. That's why it could be something valuable, invaluable. Nor it set forth in the marketplace cannot be sold. It cannot be purchased of the merchants and love cannot be. Uh, we know it. Nor can it be weighed out in the balance for gold. And this is where Ghani Khan has referred to it that. That love cannot be. He also says that thing that it cannot be measured. The musician will sit now. There's a change. The musician will sit in their gallery, said the young student, and play upon their stringed instruments. And my love will dance to the round sound of the harp and the violin. She will dance so lightly that her feet will not touch the floor and the courtiers and the courtiers in their gay dresses will throng around. Ha. Uh, I mean, too many people will be attracted to her. Will throng around her, too many people will be attracted to her. But with me, she will not dance, for I have no red rose to give her. And he flung himself down on the grass and buried his face in his hands and wept. Why is he, is he weeping? Asked a little green lizard as he ran past him with his tail in the air. It's a wonderful argument, that is. Why indeed said a butterfly, butterfly who was fluttering about after the sunbeam? Why indeed whisper a daisy who is snabbering in a soft low voice? <laughs> he is weeping. Very important characters. When you don't understand a phenomena, means the people uh, who don't understand a specific phenomena. So the only thing they can do is that ask questions. And because the green lizard and the butterfly and the daisy that I don't know what is going on there. So for this reason, they ask a question, why weeping? He is weeping for a red rose, said the nightingale. For a red rose, they cried. How very ridiculous. Like one, why should one weep for, for a red rose? And, and the little lizard, who was something of a cynic, laughed outright. Wonderful thing here is that something of a cynic mean that it couldn't take anything for granted, but to obey it properly. And when the, the, the lizard thought it to be something stupid, which is, which is not having uh, material weight for a practical, practical uh, benefit, and that thing is valued, or one is mourning for it, or one is weeping for it, it was not up to the taste of uh, the lizard. Generally, it happens that the practical or what are called the Machiavellian people or the pragmatists or the utilitarian uh, minded people, they do not consider uh, feelings, emotions, sympathies. And, and there are lots of them. It's not uh, just a single case. There are lots of them that we find in our surroundings. The nightingale in the study seat of student sorrow, and she sat silent in the oak tree and thought about the mystery of love. The mystery of love, it has not been discovered even till 21st century. Some people are considering it the game of hormones, other people are uh, considering it uh, some interplay of glands, and certain people are considering it to be uh, imprinting of social uh, and political norms on the blank slate of human uh, skull. So it's it's there, uh, it's still a mystery. Uh, and for, for, for the writer also, it's a mystery. Suddenly she spread her own wings for flight and soared into the air. She passed through the groove like a shadow and like a shadow, she sailed across the garden. 
in the center of the grass plot was standing the beautiful rose tree. And when she saw it, she flew over, over to it and lit upon a spray. Give me a red rose, she cried, and I'll sing you my sweetest song. But the tree shook its head. My roses are white. My roses are white, it answered, as white as the foam of the sea and whiter than the snow upon the mountain. But go to my brother who grows round the old sundial and perhaps he'll give you what you want. So the nightingale flew over to the rose tree that was growing round the sun, old sundial. It was like wall clock in the past times. Give me a red rose, she cried, and I'll sing you my sweetest song. But the tree shook its head. My roses are yellow, it answered. As yellow as the hair of a maiden who sits upon an amber throne, and yellower than the daffodil that blooms in the shadow before the mower, comes with his sigh. But go to my brother who grows beneath the student's window, and perhaps he will give you what you want. So the nightingale flew over to the rose tree that was growing beneath the student's window. Give me a red rose, she cried, and I'll sing you my sweetest song. But the tree shook and said, my roses are red and answered, as red as the feet of the dog. There are so many personifications and similes and metaphors. As red as the feet of the dove is, is uh, a simile. And redder than the great fans of coral that wave and wave in the ocean cavern. Uh, that's kind of grass that is down there visible. But the winter has chilled my veins and the frost has nipped my buds and the storm has broken my branches and I shall have no roses. And I shall have no roses. <laughs> <laughs> and all this year. One red rose is all I want, cried the nightingale. Only one red rose. Is there no way by which I, I can get it? There is a way, answered the tree. But it is so terrible that I dare not tell it to you. Tell it to me, said the nightingale. I'm not afraid. If you want a red rose, said the tree, you must build it out of music by moonlight and stain it with your own heart's blood. You must sing to me with your breast against a thorn all night long. You, you must sing to me and the thorn must pierce your heart and your life blood must flow into my veins and become mine. As I told you that because uh, this uh, nightingale is a symbol for a poet and also a creative artist in any form that is whether a novelist or fiction writer or a painter or uh, a tragedy writer or whatever thing. So it's it's a creative artist. And whenever a creative artist is producing something, <clears throat> so the life blood is involved in it. That is what uh, John Milton has recorded in, in Herpegetica. That is what Deccans has talked about his characters. And that's my practical experience as well. So whenever uh, a creative artist is going to create something, so the soul is being in, is being uh, is being engaged into it, and uh, Keats also that said that thing that pouring pouring forth your soul. So that's why we and, and I have also written myself somewhere in in my critical essay that poetry generally carries the mood in which it is written, and even. Uh, fiction and paintings also carry the modes in which they are, they are prepared. If something is written with eyes full of tears, definitely the reader will encounter that, that thing. And if it is written with smiling lips, then again they will encounter it. Death is great peace to pay for red rose sky there, and the life is very dear to us. It is pleasant to sit in the greenwood and to watch the sun in, in his chariot of gold, a tanga type stuff, chariot. And the moon in her chariot of pearl, sweet is the scent of the hawthorn and sweeter the bluebells that hide in the valley. And the, and the heather that blows on the hill, yet love is better than life. And what is the heart of a bird compared to the heart of a man? You would remember, Generally, we talk of this thing that everything is in dialogue with everything 
else. And when I read literary text in specific, I'm reminded of too many things that I've read. Like here, when you are saying this thing, the heart of a man, of a human being. So definitely that is, we know about uh, Rumi, that he is valued human. About, and, and that the entire Christian paradigm is sitting that thing. And as we talked about in the beginning of humanism. So she spread her brown wings for flight and soared into the air. She swept toward the garden like a shadow and like a shadow she sailed through the grove. A small forest type, type thing. The young student was still laying on the grass where she had left him and, and the tears were not yet dry in his beautiful eyes. Be happy, cried the nightingale. Be happy. You shall have your red rose. I'll build it out of music by moonlight and stain it with my own heart's blood. All that I ask of you in return is that you will be a true love. For love is wiser than philosophy. Love is wiser than philosophy. Though she is wise, although philosophy is wise, but love is wiser than and mightier than power. Power is mighty. Power is mighty, but love is mightier than Flame colored are his wings. I mean, there is a Urdu verse again, uh, and Agni and something like that. Flame colored are his wings, and colored like flame is his body. I mean, in 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 love, you have to be burnt. His lips are sweet as honey, and his breath is like uh, frankincense. Honey is sweet, and if you eat, you would like to eat again and again. And similarly. Frankincense is that kind of uh, gum that is coming out of the trees of the, the stem of uh, uh, fruit trees and it is sticky. It, it sticks. So, I mean, once you are addicted to love, you cannot get rid of that. The student looked from, up from the grass and listened, but he could not understand what the nightingale was saying to him. For he only knew the things that are written down in books. I have a very wonderful point here at this point moment that there is there is difference in in observation in wisdom and things written in books different many times people who have read books they cannot understand practical life and they are failure in practical lives and many times when people are you know uh, half read or little read, but they, they understand practical life better than uh, those who have read that. So Nightingale, uh, because he was bookish, the student was bookish. That's why he couldn't understand things. But the oak tree understood and felt sad, for he was very fond of the little Nightingale, who had built her nest in the branches. The oak tree, as I told you earlier, it was a uh, world, world at large, world in general that people generally like poets, even though if they are being killed. Sing me one last song to this one. I shall feel very lonely when you are born. When poets die, when poets die, so people remember them. Like John Elia is dead now and people remember him. Like Sagar is dead now and people so the nightingale sang to the oak tree and her voice was like water bubbling from a silver jar. When she had finished her song, the student got up and pulled a, pulled a notebook and, and a lid, lid pencil, pencil out of his pocket. She has found, he said to himself, about the nightingale. As he walked away through the groove, that cannot be denied to love. But has she got feeling? The nightingale. Has the nightingale got feel? I'm afraid not. In fact, she's like most artist. She is all style without any sincerity. I am reminded of uh, Bilal Tanvir's The Scatter Here Is To Great. He is, you know, he is uh, uh, abashed the, the writers and how they are divided of feelings. All style without any sincerity. She would not sacrifice herself for others. She thinks merely of music. And everybody knows that arts, artists, or arts are selfish. Still, it must be admitted that she has some beautiful notes in her voice. 
but there is beauty in it though what a pity it is that, that